Hi, if you've ever wondered how to construct the bijective PWT, then this talk is for you. This talk is a presentation of our paper to CPM this year, written together with my co-authors Hideo Banai, Juha Karkinen and Marcin Piadowski. If you have never heard about the bijective PWT, you can still enjoy this talk. So what is it all about? The bijective BWT, or shortly BBWT, is the Boris Wheeler transform, or shortly BWT, of the Linden factorization of an input text with respect to the omega order. So the main audience may not be familiar with the Linden factorization or the omega order. So I will briefly explain what these two things are. If you have never heard about the Boris Wheeler transform or the BWT, I will also explain it um, briefly after that. So first, let's focus on uh, the Luton factorization. For that, we need to know what Luton words are. So for instance, a Luton word is A or AABAB. The definition says that a word is a Luton word if it is smaller than every of its proper suffixes or it is smaller than all of its rotations. Smaller speaking, lexicographically smaller. So what are not Linden words? Here are two cases. The first one is ABA, AB. Why is it not a Linden word? Because there is a rotation, AAB, AB, which is namely above there, which is smaller than this one. So it cannot be a Linden word. The second one is AB, AB. You can see that the suffix AB is lexicographically smaller than ABAB, so ABAB cannot be a Luton word. Now, having Luton words, we can define the so called Luton factorization. That's thanks to Chen and others, uh, more precisely, Chen, Fox, and Luton, back into the 50s, where given a text T, we want to factorize T into T1 until TT factors, where each factor is a Lunden word. And this Lunden factorization is uniquely defined by using the restriction that the factors, if you write them from left to right, so they create a non-decreasing sequence, meaning that the X factor is either equal to its right sibling or lexicographically larger. Duval proposed an algorithm to compute the Linden factorization in linear time. And we use that for achieving the construction time bounds later on. An example is senescence. T is senescence, which senescence meaning pretty old. If we take the Linden factorization that so we computed from, uh, for T, and then we get four factors, and we can see that each factor is a Linden word, and we have um, this strict decreasing order of the Linden factors. Next, we need this omega order. Given two strings u and w, we say that u is smaller than w with respect to the omega order. If when writing u in its infinite concatenation, lexicographically compared with the infinite concatenation of w, is lexicographically smaller. An example is ab and aba, where ab is lexicographically smaller than aba but it's the contrary for the omega order. And to see that for the omega order, we just have to write the infinite concatenation, um, but we can stop whenever we do a character wise comparison and hit a pair of characters that don't match. Like here in the fourth position, you can see that A is smaller than B and therefore ABA has to be smaller than AB in the omega order. Finally, we need conjugates. So given our text consists of n characters from T1 until Tn, then the conjugates are just the sh cyclic shifts. So we start at the original text, take the first character 
and move it to the back and yield this string here. And then we recurse until we get this string. And again, take the first character and move it to the back. But then we obtain the original string back. So in total, there are n conjugates for a string of length n. So having all that defined, we can now define the bijective BWT again on our example senescence. sense. We start with the Linton factorization symbolized by these vertical bars and collect for each Linton factor all its conjugates. Down there, we put these conjugates into a list and sort this list with respect to the omega order. Now, this omega order is important. We cannot switch it to a lexicographic order, for instance, because um, the S is in omega order larger than SENA. Just imagine there is a second S and the third S and so on, but the second S is already larger than the second E, so it has to be larger than CNA. Now, if we arrange um, these conjugates to the right, uh, right align, and read the last characters from top to bottom, we obtain the BBWT. Now, why do we focus on the BBWT? What is our motivation behind it? Though the BBWT exhibits certain interesting properties. And the first thing is that it doesn't need the usual dollar, which is needed for the standard BWT. And this could be crucial if you have binary alphabet and you don't want to increase your alphabet by adding the dollar. Scott and Gill found out that the BBWT seems to be more compressible at certain texts with uh, respect to the standard BWT. Then the BBWT is interesting because the extended BWT is a special case of the BBWT, uh, which has its own applications. Finally, and recently, it has been shown that the BBWT is indexable. So we can create a full text index based on the BBWT. But for that, we of course first need to construct the BBWT. And up to now, only the linear time construction has been conjectured. Here we come in and prove you a linear time algorithm. But let's first think about the time. How, how much does it take if you do that naively? So given this conjugate list before, you have n conjugates because the number of text positions is n. And a conjugate can take about at most n characters, so naively it's um, quadratic time. But if we look at the BWT, there are algorithms that construct the BWT with the suffix array. So we wonder whether we can use a suffix sorting algorithm that works in linear time for computing the BBWT. To understand that, we just briefly uh, review the BWT with respect to suffixes. So given our example, we take all suffixes of it and then take the previous character of each suffix. A corner case is when um, the suffix is the text itself, where we take the last character of the text. So we wrap around and take the E. In the other cases, it's just um, one character before the suffix. And then we align the suffixes to the left part, and then we sort the suffixes. And while sorting the suffixes, we move the blue characters along. So the blue characters are kind of values that do not participate at the sorting, but are needed afterwards because after the sorting, when the suffixes are sorted, we just need to read the characters, the blue characters from top to bottom and obtain the BWT. So unfortunately, the BBWT looks different, so we cannot use the same steps as before, but we try to use slightly different things to get the BBWT. For that, first remember that we need the Linton factorization, then we compute the conjugates, 
And now we do something similar. We take the last character. So previously we took the last character only for uh, the suffix if it's uh, the text itself, so it's kind of corner case. Now we do that uh, regularly for every conjugate. Align the conjugates to the left and do again the sorting like previously, but we use this time the omega order as the order in which to sort. But again, if we now read from top to bottom, we get the BBWT. So this is our output and we're done. Now, what actually happened is that we used for the BWT the suffix array. And we can write the BWT in this form where we take the i's position of the suffix array, minus one, so the position before, and look up in the text this position. Now, what does the suffix array store? It stores in the i's position the starting position of the i's smaller suffix with respect to the lexicographic order. So our prob problem of computing the BWT reduces to suffix sorting. And to compute a suffix array, we can use, for instance, size. Size is a well-known suffix array construction algorithm due to Nong and others. And it works in linear time for integer alphabets. So our hope is now to find something similar to the suffix array, to get kind of the same shape up there. And luckily, there is something which we call in this talk LSA, L for Linden. But uh, Hong and others called that a circular suffix array. And it uh, star, um, stores in the ith position so the starting position of the i's smallest conjugate with respect to the omega order. Otherwise, the shape looks like, um, kind of reminds the previous slide. But for constructing the LSA, we need, again, a different algorithm, or more precisely, a modification of size, which we call L size, again, for Linden. And the game is now that we want to sort conjugates more precisely the Linden word or Linden factor conjugates instead of the suffixes. And we want to use the omega order instead of the lexicographic order. Now for that to happen, we need to tweak a little bit the definitions of what a suffix is and how to deal with the Linden factors, which we do with something which we call rewinding. What we do is that we want, whenever we are in the factor and we go to the right or to the left, we don't want to escape from the factor. So we want to rewind when we go out of the factor, for instance, to the right. So let's say we are at T2, the so second factor, at position 5. So this is beyond the length. Then what we want to do is we just want to jump back to the beginning. And for that, if we do that, we can also do that for suffixes. So we kind of abuse a notation here. So let's say we want to use this notation here to denote that we start at T4. And because it's already the end and we go to the right, then we actually jump back to the beginning and take one, two, three, four, or again at the end and loop back and continue this uh, infinite times. So we get an um, infinite string down there. So in general, for any x, we can define um, this kind of uh, notation where we can add something and do actually a modulo calculation. We also want to be curious about uh, subtracting. So whenever I go uh, to the left, outside of the factor, so the zeroth position, which actually does not exist, which actually means um, hop back to the last position of the factor. And this is um, the more general shape of what we call a suffix. Starts at the ice position, and then it do, does here the rewinding and continue um, endlessly. We do all that because then we can transform the comparison in the omega order to the lexicographic order. For instance, um, if we look at how size L and S types define, we can do that now analogously. So we say that uh, position 
TXI is uh, if it is smaller than um, its uh, position to the right, then um, it's an S type. And if um, we can swap around the um, order, then it's L type. And if it's equal, then the I's position inherits uh, the type of um, TXI uh, plus one. But remember again that uh, this can mean uh, a rewinding. But thanks to the Linton factorization, actually you don't care about the rewinding for um, the SNL types because they work exactly in the same way as in the original size. The only thing is that causes a little bit trouble is uh, the factors of length one, because if you you can only rewind if you go to the right or, the, or to the left, so you don't have anything to compare. And therefore, we need a special rule, which we add for the S star types, which are also common in size. And for the S star type, we say that the I's position is, um, if it is S type and the previous position is L type, then it's S star type. And our modification is that we additionally say that the first character of each factor is always uh, S star type. And that's all. Lastly, for um, all necessary definitions, we need LMS substrings. So given two indices for within the factor um, IJ, so this gives a substring in the factor, is called an LMS substring if um, I and J are S star types, and within this interval, any other position is not a S star type. Now, the peculiar aspect is that we add here a plus one in the bounds for j. So we allow j to go beyond the length of tx, which means that we here allow uh, a wrap back. So for instance, for es, we can go back to e. So es, e gives us a LMS substring. And um, for instance, um, C, E, N, and wrap around, and we get C is also a LMS substring. And the um, most interesting one is uh, the factor with length one, because it just takes S, wraps around, and gets again the S. So this is um, this LMS substring. And in this fashion, we get all the LMS substrings uh, here sorted by the starting positions. But actually, we don't need them in starting position order, but in lexicographic order. So this is what our algorithm does. It does exactly the same things like size. It's just a small modification about the suffixes. So we first sort the LMS suffixes with respect to the, uh, with, with respect to the lexicographic order, then place the star types in our um, modified suffix array where we know their order based on the order of the LMS substrings. And then we proceed with the induction steps for L types and S types and are done. So for the first part, we just take this list of LMS substrings and sort them lexicographically. And this works exactly like in size. Uh, please look at the paper to see the similarity and the proof for that. Um, the actually um, steps are like what follows with uh, the S and L type induction steps. So assume now that we have already magically sorted the LMS substrings, like in this case here. Then the next thing is that we allocate the LSA array. It's exactly like in size where we just um, partition the array into buckets for each character. And each character gets sub-buckets for L and S types. For instance, E has three slots in its S sub-bucket because there are three E's in the text that are S or S star. The first step is now that we take our list of LMS substrings and put these numbers into the respective S buckets exactly in the order like say up here, like nine, six up here, uh, goes down there because they start with a C. And then we're done already with the S star types and go on to the L type induction. 
what we do there is like in size, we scan um, the LSA from left to right. And whenever we find a non-empty cell, like here the nine, we go to the left. But again, like our definition says, if um, it's the beginning, then we wrap around and go to the back. This is position 10. We check, is it an L type? Yes, it is. So put this one here, the 10, um, to ease L subbucket, which we did there. We go to the next entry, which is 6. And do the same step for the 8n, put them down there. And for the 10, because the previous character of 10, 9 is a S type, we skip it. And then we continue for all uh, entries. And this gives us this shape, but we are not done yet because we haven't yet induced the S types. For that, we do the induction step like in size with the opposite direction. So we start from right and go to the left. So for instance, um, for five, we go to the left, find the four, which is a S type and put the four in E's S sub bucket. But now because we scan from right to left, we fill the buckets also from right to left. So we get this shape here. And now we are actually done because if we subtract now one from each entry, but again, do the wrap around. So nine becomes 10 instead of eight because nine is the first position of a factor. But for instance, for 10, it's nine and for eight, it's seven in the usual case. Then we obtain this array. And if we plug now these numbers into T, we get this string here, and this string is the BBWT we want to compute. So we're actually done now, but let's look at the time. So for size, we always need to compute the LMS substrings recursively. So given that we have an instance of length n, so we have n characters in our text, then the time complexity tau is order of n for determining, for instance, the types and so on, plus the recursive call, which takes a tau of um, n half. That's because the number of LMS substrings is at most n half. And because of that, we get here a linear time bound. But the problem now is that the number of LMS substrings in L size can be a theta n for all recursion steps. So we still again get quadratic time, and this is kind of sad. But why is that the case? This looks kind of yeah, crazy. So let's take this string here. t equals a lot of b's, a giant run of b's, and then a repetition of a, a, b, a, b. A, A, B, A, B, and so on. We do the Linton factorization and we get a lot of um, factors of length one, namely for the Bs, and then a repetition of this A, A, B, A, B. Now, if we compute the LMS substrings, we get three different kinds of LMS substrings, namely B, then wrap around B, then A, A, B, A, this one here, and then A, A, B, and wrap around A. We assign each LMS substring a rank according to their lexicographic order. So this is the first one, this is the second, this is the third one. And in the recursive step, we exchange the um, characters with the LMS ranks. And we do that by substituting uh, the left-hand sides, but omitting the last character with the respective rank. So we get this string here. So the first observation is that the number of Bs uh, here in the prefix is the number of threes. So we have the same amount and we could not reduce anything here. So uh, the factors of length one are bad. 
The second but interesting thing is that actually we don't need these vertical bars for highlighting the Linton factorization because we can just compute the Linton factorization freshly from the string because it's the same as for the original string. So this is our first observation that we can just use the LMS um, substring, the more precisely the ranks of them for computing the Linton factorization, which means that even in the recursive calls, the Linton factorization as it was before, um, we still retain it. And the second thing is that if we have a character C, then all LMS substrings that start with C are larger than just C with respect to the omega order. And to see that, let's look at this example. And I have here two question marks and you can take a game and put anything in there and see that whatever you put into these questions marks, you will never get T3 to be like, lexicographically smaller than T4 or in the omega order smaller than T4. So you always know that T4 is the smallest among all LMS substrings that start with uh, C. So CC is the smallest LMS substring. So whenever you do the recursion, then you can just omit T4. And when you're back outside of the recursion, you, can, you know that you just have to put T4 in the first element in the bucket of Cs, and you're done. So in summary, we have shown how to compute the bijective PWT in linear time on integer alphabets, thanks to having size and just do a little bit tweaking because we now sort the conjugates of the Lunden factors in the omega order instead of the suffixes in lexicographic order. And we skip the LMS substrings of length one in the recursion. Thanks for listening and any questions are always welcome.